Hello everyone and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with Computer Music Magazine and we start off with the eternal question TB or not TB. To coincide with volume 303 from Computer Music we're going to celebrate by this month looking at our fantastic new look Zebra CM plugin and recreate some of those eternal 303 sounds. So we're going to kick off in our usual way by loading our favoured door and putting in an instance of the Zebra CM plugin. Once you've done that, we need to initialize the plugin and the patch that we're working with, and we do this by going to the patch locator at the top of the screen here, clicking and selecting init, which stands for initialize, towards the bottom of the menu. Once we've done that, we've actually got a sound which is not a million miles away from the basic default setting of a TB303. What we're hearing there is just a wide open filter with a sawtooth being created by oscillator 1. Now also, the TB303 is a monophonic voice synthesizer, so we need to check that we're definitely in mono mode. And we do this by going to the top left hand side of the oscillator here, where we have the number 1 which is currently highlighted. That means that oscillator 1 is going to be working monophonically and will only produce one note at a time, which is exactly what we want for a 303 mimic. As you will hear if you audition the sound at the moment, it's very, very bright. So our next port of call is going to be the filter section over on the right hand side of the plugin. And we're going to take the cutoff control and drag that all the way down to around about the 10 o'clock position. And it should immediately sound quite dull by comparison. Now don't panic just yet because we've got more work to do on this before we get the sound we want. Although it's just worth mentioning that there are a number of different filter types in the Zebra CM plugin. You can get at these different filters by clicking on the section that says Type and you'll get a drop down menu. Now in actual fact the TB303 was a 24 dB low pass filter, however for various reasons, possibly to do with component degradation, many users report that it sounds more like an 18 dB filter. So the fact that we're not using a 24 dB filter, and we are in fact using a 12 dB filter, makes it a little bit closer to the 18 dB ideal that we might find on an original. You might also like to experiment with the vintage low pass filter that we have just above it. That's got quite a vintage characteristic which is not a million miles away from a 303. However, the best choice in our view is definitely the 12 dB filter. The next thing we need to do is to introduce some of that highly identifiable 303 squeal. And in order to get that, we need to make a slight tweak to the resonance control. We're going to place that just in front of the 12 o'clock mark, which should read on the display at the top roughly 45, 46, 47, somewhere around there. If you audition the sound now, it will sound largely the same as it did before. However, what we're going to do next is to apply some envelope 2 modulation to the filter section. So we move down to the pot which is labelled with envelope 2. This is an assignable pot which has already been assigned to envelope 2 for us. And we're going to just drag that up to roughly the 1 o'clock mark. And now you can immediately hear a little bit of a sound that's a bit more reminiscent of a 303. Also interesting to note that if you look around the cutoff pot control, you'll see a little turquoise line has appeared. That indicates that some modulation is in play. You can see as we drag that up, that line increases. Later on, we're going to be visiting the sequencer page within Logic to program in a sequence. And part of what we will do there is changing note velocity. So we need to set up a degree of velocity control. And this is very easy to do. We merely go to another user-defined pot. We've got this one on the far right here. I'm going to click on the legend below the pot itself and I'm going to select velocity. In doing so, I can then drag the pot up to a position that's roughly two o'clock. And it means that when I play a note, the harder I hit the note, we get a degree of velocity control. And we'll be employing that later on. Our next port of call is going to be the envelope section. And in fact, we're going to make alterations to both envelope 1 and envelope 2. Envelope 1 is functioning as our volume or amplitude envelope. So what we're going to do here is go to the sustain pot and we're going to drag that down so it's roughly in the 10 o'clock position. The effect that this will have is still give us a pretty harsh attack and decay, but it means there will be far less sustain, which makes it far more punchy for the kind of thing that we're after. We're going to do something quite similar with envelope 2. Now if you remember, we have already assigned envelope 2 to our filter section. So all we need to do here is to go to the decay pot, place that at roughly the 11 o'clock position, and then we're also going to take our sustain pot, 
and drag that all the way down to zero and do the exact same with our release pot. We should now get a sound a bit like this. Now if we start to play the sound at this point, it's already starting to sound quite like a 303. And I've got a pre-prepared sequence here to demonstrate this. Now we're largely finished working with the sound itself, but there are some other things that you could do to give it a little bit more flavour. One of the things you could do is add a little bit of delay to the back end of the signal. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. First of all, you can work within your door if you prefer. And I've got an Echo Boy plugin from Sound Toys plugged in here. That will do a very good job of just giving us a sort of tape delay type effect. Or, if you want to, you can also apply a delay within the Zebra CM plugin itself. This is relatively easy to do, but you do have to switch it on first. So the way to activate it is to go down to the bottom right hand side of the plugin and you'll see that there are already three user defined legends already plugged in feeding the master gain at the end here. We're going to activate delay by quite simply doing a right click or if you prefer a control click on the middle one here that's labeled delay and we're going to set it to active. By doing so, we'll then get some delay. At the moment, the delay is quite present. There's an awful lot of it there. So a couple of things you can do is in the delay section, just change the feedback so it's a little bit less and also change the mix so it's not quite so generous. So you can hear that it's there, but it's not overpowering. If we now move away from the synth itself and think about the notes we might like to play, I'm just going to shut this plug-in window and reveal what I've been doing in the editor section of Logic. This is known as the piano roll editor in Logic, although there are other editors and other doors that look very, very similar. You can see we've got a piano keyboard down the left hand side and we have a bar ruler across the top. Each one of these icons here is effectively a note. The longer the actual icon, the longer the note itself. Now I'm going to get rid of all the notes by deleting them and now I'm going to pick up the pencil from the toolbox and start drawing in notes. Because the piece of music that I'm working in is in the key of C minor, I want to start by drawing in a note of C. So I'm going to take my pencil and draw in the note C. Once I've done that, I can then adjust the length of the note and I want the note to be a 16th note in length to mimic what we have in the way of a sequencer on the TB303. Now having adjusted that note to a single 16th note, we can now press play. And now I can draw in further notes, and you'll notice that having adjusted that first note, any subsequent note will be exactly the same. So we got quite a cool little sequence going there, but there are some other things that we can do. One quite nice feature is to extend notes to a little bit longer than you think you might need them. So I'm going to extend this note here, and I'm going to extend this first note as well. When I play it now, we get this effect. And also, another little feature that could be found on the 303 was the accent feature. Now we can mimic this by altering the velocity of any of the notes that are on screen. In Logic, we do this by picking up the velocity tool. So I'm going to go to my first note and I'm going to increase its velocity to 127. I'm also going to go to this other elongated note and select that to 127 and also my last note in sequence and put that to 127. So we now get some subtle little accents as this moves through. Now we should explain that the velocities that you could use can vary. It's a good idea to set all the velocities for all of the notes to the same value to start with. And a good place to start would be a value of 100, which is the one that we've used here, or a value of something like 64, because 64 is the halfway position between 0 and 127, which is the scale that velocities work on, in line with all other MIDI continuous controller values. Either way, you can create some very cool and authentic sounding 303 loops with this technique. Now there is one last thing that we should explain. The 303 was very good at being able to program what are known as slides or glides as we sometimes call them, which is where the note will slide from one note to the next. 
This is actually quite difficult to program in an environment such as this. However, when you play your sequence, if you then want to visit the Zebra CM plugin, move to the left hand side where it says Glide, you can activate a little bit of Glide and whilst it won't be entirely the same, it will give you a flavour of the kind of thing that the 303 could do. <laughs> You can hear that's now gliding from one note to the next. So I hope you've enjoyed this month's 303 facsimile. Do enjoy, and we'll see you next time.